I'm putting together a small little script. Meh. I don't really think it's small. It's like 12 or 13 pages. It's just hastily put together. I spent about two hours on it, I think. Something like that. That's the script. Going over the information, I spent a couple days reading about the company, actually. There's a lot of surprising stuff in it, but not really that surprising seeing how it's a Chinese company. Some of the stuff I'll be going over shouldn't be that surprising to people that are um, familiar with China. It's taken me a couple days to get this together. A lot of stumbling, and it's probably going to be kind of choppy because I'm going to have to cut some of this up and take parts out, put parts in, rearrange it. I did get a good chunk of it off of Wikipedia. Some of it I found out from other places. A lot of it aligns with what's actually on Wikipedia. I don't know who did the Wikipedia piece. It's all listed right there on Wikipedia. Most people, when they edit a Wikipedia page, they put where they got their information from on the bottom anyway. So it's all right there. I could have just used that instead of digging through it myself, but I feel better digging through it myself, getting it together. And other stuff that I didn't find, I found on Wikipedia. It leads me to trust Wikipedia a little better, but I never do trust Wikipedia 100%. Because it is just, you know, random people putting stuff on Wikipedia and calling it good. Even if they do list and give links to where they got the information. You can't always believe anything that somebody says. I mean, sometimes you can't even believe your own eyes. But anyway. Let's get to know Tencent, for better or for worse. They're a Chinese company with over 7,000 members of the Chinese Communist Party as its workforce. That's 23% of their total workforce. And they're growing. But 60% of whom are core to their technical personnel. With that growing a little over 1,000 each year. And now that they have Techland, that's probably going to grow even more. Techland wasn't that big, but every time they pick up a company, they're going to have to put more behind the technical part of their company to oversee them. The CCP are the driving force behind the direction of the company in its acquisitions and growth. That's a no-brainer. I mean, that, that's what the communist people do. I'm not saying all Chinese are communists. That's just what the communism market does if you want to call it a market anyway they're just trying to buy everything and we'll go over that in a little bit they are headquartered in shanzen and are if not the largest company in the gaming industry based on investments they are the world's largest video game vendor and one of the most financially valuable companies there is they have their hands in everything from cell phones to music and beyond their portfolio consists of over 600 companies, but began focusing on tech startups in 2017, initially letting them operate autonomously. Their value approached 1 trillion USD in January of 2021, before it began to fall sharply. They were founded by Pony Ma, and I'm going to butcher the ever-living crap out of these names. Um, I'll try. That's all I can say. I just, in the English language, we don't use Z's and X's together. Anyway, Zong Zindong. By the way, these are the founders. Pony Ma. That's not his real name. That's what he goes by. We'll go over his real name later. Zong Zingdong. Zhu Xiaoyin, Charles Chen, and Zing Langguing. And I know I butchered them. In November of 1998, as Tencent Inc. in the Cayman Islands. The name Tencent actually translates into English as Galloping Fast Information. 
That is not what I expected ten cent to mean. Naspers, which I had to check several times because I thought, and I don't know why, I just, I came from a time of Napster, and I just thought they had butchered the name, but no. Naspers purchased a 45.5% share in cent in 2001 and as of uh, and as of 2021 it had a 30.86% share through process p r o s u s process well also owns a stake in Tencent sister companies such as and some of these I couldn't actually find names of they just go by their Chinese stock names of OLX VK um, here's one trip.com group delivery hero IK me show stack overflow which I visit quite often and didn't know Udemy Code Academy which I've visited a couple times. Brainly, which I've heard of. And Pay You. I'm pretty sure everybody's run across them on um, websites. Well, not everybody, but you get the point. And in 2004, they started adding licensing agreements. And in 2007 through 2008, saw a rapid increase in this market. They started buying rights to games. And then licensing the games out to other people i mean that's what the music industry does they'll buy the rights to these songs and then license them out that's the same thing they're doing with the video games <laughs> well in february of 2011 they acquired a majority of riot games a 92.78 percent share the developers of league of legends Or uh, 230 million. That was United States money, by the way. They already held a 23, well, 22.34% share from a 2008 investment, now making them the whole owner of Riot Games. And in 2012, they picked up Epic Games, who developed Fortnite, Unreal, Gears of War, and Infinity Blade. I never heard of that one. In that same year, they purchased Zam Networks, parent to Wowhead, and other websites from Brock Pierce. He made a bunch of websites. And I didn't know he sold out to them, but uh, that's good to know. Keep in mind, all of this was made possible just from advertising and premium users of their in-house app of QQ, which is a chat program. We'll get into that later, because they got sued over it. Those who paid monthly fees for extras, just on their chat program. On January 21st of 2011, they went live with Weezine. Whoa, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that one. W-E-I-X-I-N. Weezine, I don't know. Well, it's now branded WeChat, who has over 1 billion active users. Tencent took part in the Activision Blizzard split from Vivian. That's how I've heard it pronounced. I'm pretty sure that's wrong. As a passive investor in 2013, and has only a or had only a 4.9% share. <laughs> and I'll get into why that was had. In 2017, in that same year, in 2013, they dropped 448 million for a majority share in the Chinese search engine Sogu.com, a subsidiary of Shoshu. In 2014, Tencent picked up a 15% stake in a Chinese e-commerce website JD.com. 
by paying in cash and giving over its e-commerce e e business. PyPy, I think is how it's pronounced. QQ, Wangoi. Too many G's and O's together on that one for me. And a stake of... Well, I'm not even going to try that one. Y-I-X-U-N. And it gave all that to JD.com to make a stronger competitor to Alibaba Group. <laughs> In December of 2014, a Chinese taxi hailing group. Well, app. You know, like, uh... What's that? Uber. Basically is what it is. From what I understand. And that's did did dash. Or die die dash. I've heard it pronounced both ways when I was watching videos on it. Announced it had raised 700 million in that round led by Tencent. And a Singaporean state investment group called Tamashe. Or Tamashe. Tamashek. Again, I'm not going to be able to pronounce it correctly, and I've heard it pronounced different ways. Then in January 2015, Tencent launched WeBank, China's first and only online bank. And on the 30th of January of 2015, they signed a 700 million deer deal with the NBA to stream the NBA games in China. Later, later that year, Chinese automaker... BYD was the chief corporate sponsor of Tencent. Like in the United States for the uh, NBA, the chief broadcaster might be Nike for one year, and then it might be, yeah, I don't know, Coke the next. Or if you're familiar with NASCAR, it used to be Winston's NASCAR Cup, and then it was, uh, I don't follow NASCAR, I'm just trying to give examples. <laughs> anyway. In June of 2016, they did a deal to get a 84% of Supercell, developers of Cat Clash of Clans, worth $8.6 That's with a B. In that same year, a month later, they got a majority of a Chinese, of Chinese Music Corporation. That's a good name, isn't it? Chinese Music Corporation. I guess they're not holding any punches there. They're saying we own all the music in China. Because they basically do. <laughs> this is directly listed off of Wikipedia. I want to make sure that that's clear. I got all of this bit right here off of Wikipedia. <laughs> Private enterprises in China are required to have an infirm committee or branch of the Communist Party in three or more party members if three or more party members are among their employees. In 2016, Tencent's party branch as recognized as one of the hundred best branches in the country. <laughs> it provides communications and education platforms, including a party activity hall, WeChat channel, and an internet and an internet for party members where they can take classes related to governance of China and party policies. <laughs> Man, I wish they would have wrote that better. In March of 2017, Tesla sold out to Tencent for $1.78 billion for a 5% stake in the control systems. That's just the computer, the self-driving part. They didn't actually own any part of Tesla. It was just part of their control systems. You know, um, software, if you will, from what I understand. Anyway, they... Begin testing of the soft. Begin doing a test of the software penetration test, and that only lasted until 2019. They were just getting basically um, little kickbacks from Tesla from it. They weren't making much money off of it, and it only lasted until 2019, and they're no longer part of it anymore. In March of 2017. They surpassed Wells Fargo to become one of the world's most valuable companies. And in June of 2017, Tencent bought a 9% stake of Frontier Developments, the creators of Elite Dangerous and Planet, Co Planet Coaster franchise, as well as Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 and 3. 
November of 2017 comes and they announce they pick up a 12% share of Snap Inc. which pl planned to help bring gaming to the Snapchat program. I don't even remember if they did they got that off the ground or not. I didn't even look it up look to see if they did. I remember them talking about it. In January 2018, Tencent and Lego Group teamed up to jointly develop online games and potentially a social network aimed at children. Yeah, that's right. Tencent and Legos. You know, the little square block just step on and scream like someone just murdered you? Yeah. They teamed up to make an online chat program for kids. That's not scary at all. Can we say Predator's Dream, anyone? Because that's exactly what it would have been. If I had young kids and that came to fruition, I would have had that locked down and would have been on my kids like white on rice. Like wet on water. I would have been watching them 24-7 on that. That was just a bad idea all the way around. <laughs> anyway, August 15th, 2018 comes and we have our first slip of the company. So from 1998 till 2018, they see nothing but gains and massive gains. They go from four poor people, there was five of four poor people to seriously rich people from 98 till 2018 well and here we go here's the first slip they would lose 50 billion in a week one week and they would lose three percent of the company 50 billion three percent of the company That is a massive company. If they lose 3% and it's 50 billion. I mean, you can do the math on that. How large of a company do you have to be to lose 3% and that equates to 50 billion? I didn't do the math. <laughs> Just think about it. Anyway, they will lose 50 billion by week's end, but on the morning of the 18th, the shares of the company would drop by 3% and the government scrutiny of the gaming business would weigh heavy on them. The slip would drag more Chinese internet stakes down with it. In October of 2019, Tencent would begin selling, sending out refunds to customers of the NBA broadcast in response to Daryl Morey's social media comments and supported the Chinese protests going on at the time. I mean, who wasn't supporting the Chinese protesters? I mean... It was all over the news. I mean, you couldn't get away from it back then. It wasn't that long ago either. <laughs> September of 2020, we would see chinks in the armor of Tencent as they picked Singapore as its hub in Asia, joining rivals BitDance and Alibaba in the race to shore up their presence closer to home after complications in India and U.S. markets. <laughs> I didn't really find any concrete evidence of what was going on in India and the United States to what made them panic like that. I do know government scrutiny from China and from the United States over these uh, knockoff imports was causing a um, stink. So I think maybe that's what made them want to get closer to their shipping hubs and stuff. Because they were, the authorities were coming down on them pretty hard. From Wikipedia, directly from Wikipedia. So bad writing to ensue. In July of 2021, China's antitrust regulatory firmly, formally blocked Tencent's plans to merge China's top two video game streaming sites, Haya Live and Douyu, after it had failed to come up with significant remedies. To meet the SAMR's requirements on giving up exclusive rights. I could not find out what those rights were. 
This comes after the company's recent withdrawal. The merger, I'm assuming they meant withdrawal of the merger application for antitrust review and refiled it after SAMR. And I couldn't find out what that meant either. I don't know what SAMR stands for. Told the company it could not complete the review of the merger within 180 days of its first filing. That I could find that they have rules that if the file if they file it and they can't complete it within the 180 days, they have to refile it. So they would be stuck in this um, perpetual loop and not get the deal done they want it done. Well, Tencent planned to take search engine Sogu private was approved by SAMR. Tencent later announced to its intention to take Douyu private in part due to the unsuccessful merger, but also due to lackluster business performance and disagreements over strategy among company executives. Tencent is currently the largest stakeholder in Douyu with the 37% stake. That also gives them a huge voting right. In January of 2023, Open Secrets reported that Tencent spent over 6.3 million lobbying the United States federal government after coming under greater regulatory scrutiny in 2020. Does anybody see a problem with that? I do. It can't just be me that sees a problem with the Chinese government handing over 6.3 million to the United States government trying to get laws passed in favor of the Chinese government. And if you're watching the news of the bribes that say that Biden took 7 million from the Chinese government to pass laws in the United States in favor of China. Um, something ain't adding up here. Well, that's the problem. Something is adding up and that just ain't adding up. Well, Tencent publishes video games via its Tencent gaming division of Tencent Interactive Entertainment. It has five internal studio groups under its uh, TIMI Studio Group, Lightspeed Studios, Aurora Studio Group, More Fun Studio, and Next Studio. And we're still under Wikipedia, so this isn't my writing. Outside companies, subsidiaries, subsidiaries of its gaming division, Tencent as a whole has many major and minor investments in domestic and since the 2010s foreign gaming companies. <laughs> All right, now we're back into my writing. I've listed the gaming companies as they own part of or just outright own it. It's a long list. Uh, I'm going to give you some dates and percentages of the gaming companies they own when they bought them, the last time that they made an investment into them, and if it brought it up to owning a huge part or just a small part. Uh, I, I did the best I could on some of this stuff. Some of it uh, is not even listed. And some of it doesn't even go back that far. I mean, I'm not that early. I meant, like, some of it only goes back to, like, 2007 or eight, and I can't find anything newer. And most of this was on the Wikipedia page is correct anyway. Some of it was a little bit newer that I could find. But I couldn't find exact dates either. I'm going to list it. Um, lowest percentage. Meaning the companies are still free to do what they want to do. To companies that are just basically completely owned by Tencent now. <laughs> so here we go. Remedy Entertainment. Finland. Tencent invested in them in May of 2021 for 3.8%. Paradox Interactive, Sweden, March 2016 for 5%. Katakwai Corporation, Japan, October 2021, 6.86%. Frontier Developments, United Kingdom. I have no percentage, but I do have July of 2017. Ubisoft, go figure. France, March 2018, of 10%. Crafton, which is Blue Hole Studio, South Korea, August 2018, for 13.6%. K 
Kakao. Uh, that's how I heard it pronounced. South Korea. Um, May of 2013. 2012. A little disputed there. Wiki has it 2012. I found somebody else saying it was 2013. But it's anyway. It's 13.5%. Form Software. Japan. August 2022. Of 16.25%. Net Marble, South Korea, September of 2018, of 17.66%. Shift Up, South Korea, December 2022, of 20%. Marvelous, which is G Mode X Speed Games, Japan, May of 2020, 20%. Blobber Team, Poland, October 2021, 22%. Don't Nod, France, January 2021, 22.63%. CLTD, Jurina, I can't pronounce that. Singapore, 2010. It was uh, recently, more was bought in 2019. Um, for 20%, brought them up to 20%. Pocket Gems, Japan, 2015. They bought more in 2017 for 38%. Epic Games, United States, June 2012 for 40%. Grinding Gear Games, New Zealand, May 2018, 80%. Supercell, Finland, June of 2016 for 84%. Okay, now we're getting into the companies they completely and outright own. Notice one company that I have not mentioned yet. And this is why I did the last video on this. I already knew this, but I didn't mention it in the last one because they they still haven't. Techland still hasn't announced it. Tencent has, but Techland hasn't. <laughs> I mean, he said a little, couple little things that, yeah, it's a good deal for us. I'm still CEO, but he hasn't said who's been let go, who's still there. Just him. And that's all he said. Anyway, this is a list of the companies that they outright own. Ten Chambers Collective, Sweden, 2020. Fast Shark, Sweden, 2019. They bought a certain percentage. I didn't list it because it doesn't matter because they bought them outright in 2021. Fulcrum Publishing, Poland, 2022. Funcom, Norway. They bought some of them in 2019. Completely bought them in 2020. Inflexion Games, Canada, 2022. Kiel Entertainment, Canada, 2021. Layu, which is Athlon Games, Digital Extremes, Splash Damage, and two others. I didn't write them down. I just remember them. Hong Kong, December 2020. Mini Clip, Switzerland, 2015. Riot Games, United States. Bought some of them in 2019 like we went over before. 2015 bought them completely out. Shark Mob, Sweden, 2019. Sumo Group, United Kingdom. Bought some of them in 2019. Bought them out in 2022. And Techland, Poland. July 24th, 2023. Tequila Works, Spain, 2022. Turtle Rock Studios, United States, 2021. Visual Arts, which is key, key, Kinetic Nova, Japan, July 2023. Wake Up Interactive, Wake Up Interactive. Um, I can't pronounce that one name that they have, but it's uh the other part is Valhalla Game Studios, Hong Kong, 2021. And the last one is Jaeger Development, 2020. They purchased, I don't recall. I wanted to say like 60%, but I don't recall. Uh, but they bought them out in 2021. They own a lot more than that. They own 600 companies. But 
here's some more surprising companies that you might not know they own. Discord. Roblox Corporation. Lockwood Publishing. Plane Platinum Games. Aiming. Nova Rama. Trite Minion. Riff Raff Games. Off World Industries. Bohemia Interactive. Payload Studios. Platonics Games. And Voodoo. Just to list some that you might not know about. Here's some corporations that have bought themselves back or just straight up closed down. You know, they can do that. They can close their doors and tell them to F off. And here they can then buy themselves back if they get the money to. Glue Mobile. They got bought out by EA. So they got out from underneath a uh, ten cent. Play Dots. They got bought out by Take Two Interactive. Activision Blizzard. Bought itself from Vindy Conglomerate. And uh I didn't write it down. I think that was what 2017 they did that? And that whole um sexual misconduct scandal. <laughs> And then Microsoft got all of it in 2022, so Tencent lost their hold over Activision Blizzard. That same year, Somo Group subsidiary was sold to Jagex for an undisclosed amount. <clears throat> they also have streaming services because they're trying to compete with Twitch and YouTube. But then again, China has their own internet services, you know, because they can't really see outside the world. Well, their government can, but their people can't. In 2011, Tencent launched a website called, you guessed it, Tencent Video. Why not? I'm surprised they didn't call it Chinese Video, because, hell, you know, Chinese Music Group. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure they're going to own eventually. They have a controlling interest in Hiyu Live and other sites such as Douyu, Kshuhu, whatever, and Bill Bill. Now, I've heard Bill Bill long before I got introduced to all of this. I don't know how, but I've never been on the site. <laughs> In 2020, they started testing the video streaming site Trovo. And I'm probably butchering that. Live to the world. As of 2020, it owns a Malaysian video on-demand site iFlix. Competing directly with Netflix. They're heavily invested in virtual reality Augmented Reality and Artificial Intelligence. Jai Wong, Deputy Director of Technology Services Center at Tencent's office in Palo Alto, California, did an article in WIPO, WIPO, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's WIPO Magazine in December of 2020. They're involved with a whole list of things. Almost anything they can think of, they can squeeze a dime out of. I guess I can't fault them. As far as companies goes, that's what you do. I mean, <laughs> good business bottle. Buy everything you can and squeeze the crap out of it. To me, it seems like they're just trying to whole, own the whole world and uh, they're getting it done. And you can't fault them for that. They got, they got their mind set on it and they're getting it done. <sighs> I mean, it's getting scary though because... The Communist Party, the Communist Party is starting to crack down on them, going, hey, um, y'all need to chill here, because they're literally cracking down on these people. The Communist Party is literally scrutinizing the crap out of these people. Now, I, I couldn't find out why, I couldn't find out why. Probably because they have more money than the Chinese government. Maybe they're scared they're going to build their own army and take over the Chinese government. I don't know. Speculating here. I do know that the Chinese government is speculating that they have people inside the company watching what they're doing and reporting directly back to the government of what they're doing. It's like the government's scared of them. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, what do you got to do to be a communist company and then have a communist country scared of you and scrutinize you? 
and regulating you, telling you you can and can't do this anymore. I mean... That's really just... My mind's racing with the possibilities of what could actually be going on there. Well, here's an abbreviated list of things they just have their hands in. This is very abbreviated because the, the I would be here for three hours reading if I if I nitpicked what they have their hands in. You know, let's go with the television and cinema. Most of it's just in China, but they are releasing movies and comic books to the United States. Ah, uh, there's a um. What is it called? Tapas Media? Tapas Media? Something like that. It's Tapas or Tapas Media. They're out of San Francisco. And they're translating some of these comic books and movies and releasing them to the United States that they're producing in China. Tencent's producing these comic books and movies in China Sending them to this tapas, tapas media, whatever it is, in San Francisco. And then they're dubbing them in English and translating these comic books into English and releasing them on English on American soil. <laughs> and then distributing them worldwide to English speaking countries. I mean. I hope I'm not the only one that just sees a problem with that. As I already talked before, talked about before, they have video streaming. They've got several competing companies competing against themselves, but I mean, if you're competing against yourself, you're just winning whichever way you go. So, I mean, does that really count? <laughs> In the music industry, uh, this is going to surprise you. It surprised the crap out of me when I found out. Their major stockholders in Sony, Warner Music Group, YG Entertainment, Universal Music. And the biggest one is Spotify. They have a deal with Spotify that they own 10% of each other's music and freely share it. Meaning they're not actually changing, money's not changing hands. They're... they're taking 10% of Chinese music and 10% of Western music and literally just handing it over. So these artists are getting ripped off by the Chinese company and Spotify. I hope these people know this, that they're being screwed by Spotify and this Chinese company. So these two companies can make money off of their backs for free. I'm pretty sure when you sign a deal with Spotify, it's it's in the small print somewhere. It's probably in the matchbook they left in your office when you signed the paperwork. E-commerce. I mean, they've got they own a United a United Kingdom bank. Monzo, they own a United Kingdom bank. They don't own a part of it. They own the bank. The United Kingdom Digital Bank, Monzo. From what I could tell, they owned it. I couldn't find concrete evidence that they didn't, that they owned part of it. The, the evidence I found looked like they owned all of it. I hope I'm wrong. Healthcare and insurance. I don't care if they have healthcare and insurance in China. I wouldn't have said crap if that was the case. No. They have health care and insurance in the United States. In the EU. In other countries of the world. Really? They're insuring people's health? Why? Why would they be ensuring people's health? They're getting people's information. They're getting people's health information. 
The HIPAA Act in the United States doesn't mean crap. Data processing centers. I mean, part of that makes sense, right? I mean, if you own over 600 companies, you got to have some kind of system to keep track of it. But no, they're making specific software for banking industries, for healthcare industries, for governments, for other things like that. And guess who they've partnered with? They've partnered with Google using AdWords and AdSense and stuff like that that I could find. This is all on the internet. I encourage you and implore you to look it up yourself. Don't just take my word for it. If you've made it this far, don't just take my word for it. Look this up yourself. Find the information yourself. Don't rely on me for it. Hopefully you find more than I found. And hopefully you can spread it better than I can. Because this stuff is just... Shocking. Because I can't think of a better word for it. Disheartening. Just, I can't think of one. They've even created an accessibility program. Now, I, I thought they were trying to do something for the kindness of their heart. Maybe. No. No, it's for elderly people and blind people. It's a haptic feedback for a phone. It'll vibrate and tell you to turn left, turn right, go forward. That's all it does. I mean, pretty much anybody could have programmed that. I just couldn't figure out why they would have programmed it. I know they're gaining something out of it, but what are they gaining out of is my question. <laughs> Here's another part I lifted directly off of the uh, Wikipedia. I did back up all these Wikipedia parts by doing a little research of my own. I just found it easier just to copy and paste. Because some of this is I've just got notes <laughs> and some of it I've just copy and pasted it. Like I said again, directly from the Wikipedia. The Chinese government partnerships for the occasion of the 19th National Congress of the Chinese Communist Party. Tencent released a mobile game titled Clap for Xin Jinping. An awesome speech. In which players have 19 seconds to generate as many claps as possible for the party leader. In August 2019, it was reported that Tencent celebrated with the publicity department of the Chinese Communist Party and the People's Daily in development develop patriotic games. I'm reading this word for word. You can check me up on that. It's right there on Wikipedia. In December 2020 article in Foreign Policy, a former senior official of the Central Intelligence Agency stated that the CIA concluded that Tencent received funding, funding from the Ministry of the Secretary of the State Se that's my bad. Received funding from the Ministry of the State Security early on in its foundation. This was said to be a seed investment that was provided when they were trying to build out the Great Firewall and the monitoring technology. Tencent denied this allegation. In 2021, it was reported that Tencent and Ant Group we're working with the People Bank of China to develop a digital currency. Allegations of copying. Many of Tencent's software and services share similarity, similarities to those of competitors and their own. The founder and chairman. No wonder why he goes by Pony Ma. Hoi Ting Ma. I don't mean to butcher it, but I bet you I did. Famously said, to copy is not evil. A former CEO and president 
of Cena.com, Wang Zhangdong said, Pony Ma is a notorious king of copying. Jack Ma of Alibaba Group stated, The problem with Tencent is the lack of innovation. All of their products are copies. <laughs> In 1996, an Israel company named Marius Bilis, B Bailius, I'm butchering it, released one of the first standalone instant messaging, instant messaging clients named ICQ. Uh, everybody knows that. <laughs> Three years later, Tencent released a copied version of ICQ, naming it OICQ which stands for Open ICQ. After losing a lawsuit against AOL, AOL, which bought ICQ in 1998 for violating ICQ's intellectual property rights, Tencent released a new version of OICQ in December 2020 and rebranded it QQ with its model of free to use and charging for customizing personal avatars. <laughs> That's where they got rich from. QQ hit 50 million users in its second year and 856 million users and at most 45.3 million synonymous you know what, screw it, 45.3 million users at the same time in 2008. <laughs> what the hell is that word? Anyway. During early stages of the company development and expansion, Tencent has been widely accused of stealing ideas from its competitors and creating counterfeit copies of their products. Some of the criticisms aimed at Tencent in this regard are that QQ Farm was a direct copy. Okay, uh, that might be my bad for reading it that way. <laughs> Some of the criticism aimed at Tencent in this regard are that QQ Farm was a direct copy of Happy Farm. QQ Dance originated from Audition Online and that QQ Speed featured gameplay highly similar to Crazy Racing Kart Rider. In January 2023, Tencent's trailer for their new MMORPG Terrace Land. Oh God, did anybody see the trailer for that? That is nothing but World of Warcraft. They didn't change the colors. They didn't change nothing. Nothing. They just changed the names. That's it. Well, let me reread that sentence because when I... I've read this. I pre-read this because I, I wrote all this out. But anyway, it just, just kicked my brain out because it's been two days since I've had looked at this. I've had doctor's appointments all this week. <laughs> In January 2023, Tencent's trailer for their new MMORPG, Terrace Land, was said to resemble Blizzard's World of Warcraft. No, it didn't resemble it. It was World of Warcraft. They just changed names on the signs. That's it. Seriously. It's the same colors. I mean, go watch the trailer for it if you can find it. I mean, I don't want to splice one in here and get copyrighted or whatever but I would I'd put World of Warcraft side by side I don't have World of Warcraft I mean I have an account but I'd have to reinstall it because I haven't played it in 12 years since like 2004 no like 2011 I haven't played World of Warcraft since 2011 Well, let's go on to security concerns. Like, really, what do I say here? I mean, it's... Really, what... I mean... What, what do I... What... It would be easier to list things that are good. What's not concerning about their security would be so much a smaller statement it would just be pure silence blissful silence but no they were removed 
Let me find the names here. They were actually removed from software reporting, the three major software search reporting people because they were giving them doctored programs to run trials on. They were literally giving them doctored versions that would pass the scrutiny. Not thinking that these companies would go out and get actual copies off the shelf and then test those. I mean, this is the world. This isn't China, you dumb. Try not to cuss. <laughs> Do you... <sighs> I guess they never heard, never heard of the UL listing? <sighs> anyway. Anyway. What do I say here? There's so much that I could say, but I'm trying to stay on the path of the searchable here. That's to say, if I said it, you can search it and find it. We know they were removed from the whitelist of virus software years ago, and the crap they pull. Do I need to say why or what they did? I don't think it would do any good, really. We do know where they were from. I mean, we know what they're like. Mind you, not all the people of the country are like that. Uh, I would go as far as to say majority of the people of the country are not like that. Let's just say AV comparatives, AV test, and virus bulletin removed them from the whitelist jointly in 2015 or 2016. Conflicting times. Tencent gave them a doctored version of the products to test. When they got a regular copy and tested them, they found settings to be detrimental to the end user's protection if used. Exploits and gaping holes through the back door were found. They were gaming the AV test at best, and that's putting it mildly. Like I said, they were giving these testing companies doctored versions, thinking that they wouldn't go out and get copies of their own off of the shelf to test. I mean, that's how you do a real-world test. You don't say, hey, can I get a copy? Because you know they're going to do something stupid like that. <laughs> now on to censorship. You know it's bad when the Chinese government steps in and, and tells you to stop censoring what is posted on your app. How bad was it? I'd love to see what they were doing, but couldn't find any examples of it. We know they were blocking TikTok videos. I mean... TikTok's a Chinese company. And they were blocking TikTok videos. Chinese TikTok videos. That were in favor of Chinese government. And they were censoring that. And that started a set of lawsuits in China. TikTok started it all by taking Tencent to Beijing court for censoring their videos in WeChat app. Tencent then sued TikTok for defamation. Then Troutio, Trudio, I'm not going to pronounce that. I mean, it's it's half Chinese and half Italian. <laughs> That's how it looks. So, forgive me. T-O-U-T-I-A-O. -T However you want to butcher, it's fine with me. And TikTok sued Tencent for unfair competition. The CEO of Epic Games stepped in and tweeted, His company would never follow suit and punish people for expressing their opinions even though Tencent owns 40% of Epic Games. From what I found, and I can't say this is true or not, people were talking bad about Xin Jinping. Yes, I know it's Xin Jinping. And he was asked to ban those people. The CEO of Epic Games was asked to ban those people that were talking bad about the Chinese president. And he said, no. He didn't. He said he would not compromise an ethos of free speech to curry favor with Chinese authorities in the pursuit of maximum profits. That was a direct quote of his in 2018. In 2019, Tencent announced it would stop broadcasting Houston Rocket NBA games due to a tweet made by Daryl Morey, general manager of the Rockets. The tweet was in support of the protesters in Hong Kong, like I discussed earlier. The NBA spent months in damage control, sucking up to the Chinese government, repairing the damage of free speech. Sure, why not? 
December of the same year, the Chinese government ordered Tencent to improve the firm's user data rules for its app that the regulators deemed to be in violation of their censorship rules. What? Really? They're, they're telling them to stop censoring their own people? A communist country is telling them to stop censoring their own people. <laughs> How bad is the censoring? Now comes January of 2021. A class action lawsuit was filed in California against Tencent for censorship and surveillance via the, via the WeChat app. Who to thunk it? I mean, if they're censoring in China, do you think they're going to censor in the United States on the WeChat app? Oh boy, it's November 2022. Wonder what happens now. Sustain Analytics found Tencent. Sustain Analytics found Tencent to be non-compliant with the United Nations Global Compact principles over censorship. <laughs> From the wiki, Sustain Analytics is a company that rates sustainability of listed companies based on their environmental, social, and corporate governance, ESG, preferences, especially they rate companies and CEOs on being a piece of sh crap or not. Let's just say if you are on the naughty list, you are a POS, and that goes for the company as well. So from the last bit of info and from the UN, we can gather a company is a POS. Maybe they're good at making money, but I cannot find a list of companies they close the doors on. There are few, some they sell off, they part out, and few as listed. They just go away quietly into the night. Some get bought out by other companies, as I talked about, like with Blizzard. An Activision bought out by Microsoft, some go that way, but you never heard of them just closing the doors. They just disappear. You never hear of them again. Well, as we know, Techland is working on a new fantasy RPG and trying to finish the second DLC for Dying Light 2. The founder and CEO of Tencent, I'm sorry, of Techland, <laughs> said he chose to partner with Tencent to bring in the added resources to achieve the goals. I'm not getting the warm fuzzy feelings on this one. Not at all. It sounds like two mistakes happening at the same time. Techland is not a large developer. And I just don't see how they're going to pull off two big projects at the same time. Not at the scale he's talking about anyway. I hope he proves me wrong. I wish him luck. I really do. I have the ultimate edition of Dying Light 2, so if they live up to their word, which I'm not expecting them to at this point, I should get it when it comes out without paying for it. I expect to have to pay for it. I don't see that happening. I, I see me have, I see me having to buy it. I see them going back on their word. I looked before I started this video. It still says I'll get the second DLC for free because I bought the ultimate edition. I look forward to that changing quietly. Probably in the next couple of patches or so, that's going to go away. It will no longer say that. I intend to get a screenshot of it and save it so I can have some arguing room. But I, I totally expect that to go away. And if you hear this video, I suggest you do the same thing. Just take a nice little screenshot. If you have the Ultimate Edition where it says you own it and that you get the second DLC for free, because you own the ultimate, get the screenshot and save it. Doesn't mean you're going to get it for free. Just have that information. Have the proof that they had that on there. That's all I'm saying. Well, anyway, what did I miss? I messed up all over the place. So tell me where I messed up. Tell me what I missed. I mean... I'm not going to use Google Translate, so translate it for me before you put it on, put it and post it. You know, if you're Chinese and you can understand what I'm saying, cuss me out in English, not in Chinese, please. And, uh, if you liked it, I'd appreciate the like. If you didn't like it, 
click and dislike. I don't care. One or the other. Comment below which way you thought about it, hated it, liked it, what I missed, where I need to improve, which is pretty much, you know, from start to finish. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, good night, and good luck.